Esiku dedi asikoi. Hello everyone, it's Adirunke. I hope your day is going well. Today, I'd like to talk about Ibi, the third meaning for Ibi. I made a video earlier on the homograph Ibi and the meanings that it could have. It could be evil or misfortune or bad or just general unpleasantness you know especially in the forms of evil i also mentioned that it's place location setting environment if you will there are other synonyms that that uh that you could ascribe to eb as well a third meaning that eb could have same word same pronunciation same spelling same everything just uh, the different meanings that it could have so uh homographs right no homonyms <laughs> i don't know if i said homograph earlier homonyms is what i intended so the third meaning that eb could have would be uh placenta or afterbirth so eb could be placenta it could be after bath same thing and that would be like the third meaning and i've been trying to think so just so that i don't have to make a video like this say no i forgot to say something i've been trying to think of a fourth meaning that it could have just different meanings for the same word exact same word including the tone marks but i can't seem to think of any so i suppose those are the three that <laughs> if you can think of a fourth please tell me <laughs> um but i think those are the main three that exist i mentioned two earlier the third is placenta and you might be wondering for EB meaning place and EB meaning evil. Is there a connection there? Place, evil, what do they have in common? I can't think of any, but with the placenta, <laughs> I received an instant download, so to speak of why the placenta would have been called ibi it's like since the yoruba people believe that tibitire la dalia ye that is both good and evil exist on earth it's how the heart itself works it's how it was formed when it was formed with both good and evil coexisting with each other so to say um i'll attach a picture of the placenta just so that you can see what it looks like it's like this thing that attaches itself to the baby with the open b which would be the umbilical cord so it's like you at some point after the child's birth have to separate it from from the baby and since there's a duality to many things not to the irrelevant things like uh like uh you see that in many ways the duality is not applied to things like gender and pronouns and all that it's just like the really important things with the spirituality that that duality is ascribed to you know important things like good and evil and all that so um the child is automatically classified as eerie and the other part of the child that comes out with it is classified as the eb uh, especially since how you treat how when you separate the 
the the cord from the placenta how you treat that cord that attaches itself to the baby's navel you know how you treat it is also very very important in the old days even among the yoruba people we used to use hot water to sort of um, clean the area but with education and everything and everybody knows how highly educated nigerians like to be uh we sort of learned to switch over to methylated spirit now and when it's not available uh gentian violet is also another one that uh, people use but mostly at least i've not done any census <laughs> but at least i'm sure 90 percent of the time i'm not sure <laughs> i just know from general scenes <laughs> that it tends to be methylated spirit that is used to clean the area until the umbilical the rest of the umbilical cord falls off so that thing that attaches itself to the child that cord to that eb it can especially with the treatment of the cord it's just really important that thing attaches itself to the baby through the cord so it can make the baby sick how you, how you just treat that cord and that thing is really important you know how you treat it is really important it's also a channel for EB for evil for avoc to the child because the child can be sick it, like you might be wondering why does it have to be there but it has to be there it just also points to the coexistence of evil and bad and how the Yoruba people have accept, accepted it as what it is you know so it's also kind of like just because there's a high percentage of diseases and infections that are caused you know through the attachment of the placenta to the baby through that cord is also a kind of eb this is just me trying to rationalize why do, why would have been called eb so it's like two two baths it, you, some people also call it ikejiomo second of the child the other child <laughs> if you will maybe not necessarily the well i suppose yeah the other child if you will you know if you don't properly separate them and just know how to treat that cord that the placenta attaches itself to the baby with or whatever it could also cause avoc to the baby how the eb is treated is also very important typically the way that the culture works it would be the family of the actually not necessarily but most times <laughs> using myself as an example how the family treats it is important typically it would be the paternal side of the baby that would handle the the burying of the ibi of the ibioma the placenta of the child so i don't know how people do it now from the way that my soul recollects it where you bury that ibi is also very important um some will put it um where the where already where the graveside the graveside area of like their forefathers we don't burn are dead we also bury them so around there they will bury the ibi there that ibi was what nourished the child that placenta you know was what <laughs> you could say to some degree to a high degree to a very high degree took care of the baby when the baby was in the womb so they will put it where the ancestors are buried or around that area if they know so that one there would always be like an attachment to where they are from like it doesn't it doesn't mean that uh, <laughs> that child will be immobilized for life and they'll never be able to go outside the town or outside the country or just explore 
the world as it is doesn't mean but they would always and this is just one lineage culture i don't know how it would be done in other lineages you know different strokes for different folks we are all yoruba people but we have commonalities and differences people are different um irrespective of where the child goes they will always have a sentimental attachment to where they are from not just the sentimental but they'll always have an attachment wherever they are they will always feel connected to where they are from you know they won't one is solenu rather they would always remember where they are from excuse me also in doing so the ancestors are also able to nourish them they'll always be nourished by the ancestors um that was what nourished that baby in the womb so wherever it is the ancestor especially if it's where the ancestors are the ancestors would always nourish that child and by burying the placenta the ibi in that place where the child is from where their ancestry is based in the child will always feel nourished by the village so it doesn't matter if they've spent 50 years i don't know in america or they were taken out of the country right after they were born and this was then this is just an account it might be different from what your experience is they will always feel nourished by that village as soon as they step into that village you would feel like why have i not visited here earlier if they were depressed they will feel much much better they will feel healthier their mental state will be better as soon as they step into that village so that's one positive aspect as far as the rational for doing that is concerned apart from nourishment from the village and the ancestors there's also the act of burying the ibi underneath or by a tree Our ancestors were very intelligent you have to agree that depending on how you place the placenta it somewhat looks like a tree so burying it by a, there are some trees that are in certain parts of yoruba land that have their names i mean aside the typical generic name for that tree have names and are considered a part of that family or that lineage just because since the very beginning of time it's like the tree has been there f not since the very beginning of time but at least 400 500 years before the tree had been there the tree has literally been a companion for the people for that family for a long time maybe it's located in front front of their family what used to be their family heart that maybe has now been reconstructed to be like a, a house made from bricks and blocks you know the tree had always been there they can put the ibi there as well or it could just be like a specific tree known for something specific like there are other factors that come into play as well you know there's the ifa divination that is done you know the akose jaye the all that it depends if there's any specific instruction regarding perhaps even before the child was born if the, if a specific instruction had been received obviously you wouldn't just do anything you would adhere to that instruction but if there's none necessarily some people would do the burying underneath the tree thing so they'll always feel nourished by the tree when people tell stories now of yoruba people that lived long ago 
or they try to make cartoons or something they always depict them like playing the ayo or telling stories or doing things by the tree but no special significance is given or no special context is given as to why it has to be like underneath the tree aside or the tree provides shade but for our ancestors it was definitely deeper than that in many instances there are accounts of trees that were able to communicate even and through their branches the oils in their branches were able to produce certain sounds at certain moments and our ancestors were able to interpret it or oh, it means that this is going to happen or it means that so there's a lot more than what is considered there are trees that are literally worshipped and honored as if they were deities <laughs> that lived among among us you know so there's definitely more to everything than is generally discussed at least that i find there's always more to something than you find people talking about so i gave the ex the example of actually even before i get there the roko is one tree that you can't really force to grow at a particular spot which makes it even extra special it doesn't matter if you get all the seeds or you cut the branches and you bury it somewhere or you get the leaves or you do something you can do anything to transfer the roko from one side of a location to another to try to not necessarily even transplant it but try to make another iroko grow where you choose no it doesn't mean whatever you do the tree may still not grow it's one tree that you can't really force to grow it just grows wherever it wants so there are certain trees like that that ancestors and aside the iroko there are a couple more but you know sometimes generally due to how the hearth is straight look at places like lagos you know and how dirtiness and a lot of things are are seen i don't mean to insult anybody i apologize but there are certain trees that will not grow out of their own accord again like there are definitely certain species of trees and plants that existed 1000 2000 years ago that don't exist anymore these were trees that didn't necessarily need to be planted they just grew out of the blue and there's something special about trees like that trees that just grow out of the blue that are not planted their medicinal properties are just out of this world as soon as our ancestors were able to discover that oh this particular tree this is what it did you know it meant a lot to them I, I suppose in general the general preservation of the earth just meant a lot a lot more at least to our ancestors in general than you find to be the case in present day so burying the e beyond that the iroko tree trees like the iroko tree or something trees that have not only served as companions but are known to grow really really old you know not only encourages the tree to always look after the child or what that tree or whatever tree that is also called upon to bear witness to the burying it won't be like a public thing it won't be like oh everybody come see us bury the eb here you know it would be done in private so it won't be like a collective everybody we want to bury the eb come take a look type thing it's always always a private moment but the tree the child is just generally nourished when they are by that tree if they are playing a game there they are just generally happier if they are depressed if they hug the tree and they tell the tree what's wrong they just feel generally more balanced you know i made a video recently on like traumatized trees and what they would have seen um during the the again another painful topic uh well i can't say painful to topic because there's there's definitely a lot of beauty in everything there's a lot of beauty contained in the african-american brazilian or cuban or enslavement experience especially in regions where hanging people by trees as i i can't even to be honest it's a very upsetting thing i try not to 
put my energy into it because it's really, really upsetting for me. But there's definitely more to their stories than the stories of dejection and helplessness. There's definitely more to how, especially the first set of the enslaved, how they related to nature in the places that they were taken. These people were not stupid people. I mean, they were our ancestors, for goodness sake. They knew a lot of things. They, even if a lot of their discoveries and a lot of the things that they were able to share with the white Americans then were sort of, <laughs> you, when you don't give people their credit, you, I think that's one of the things that has contributed to how the African American enslaved, well, well, in general, how the enslaved, uh, present day Nigerian or even I suppose West African, how the enslaved West African was perceived and is now perceived, especially the way that they are now perceived is typically the dejected, uh, helpless, weak type thing. But that is because a lot of the things that they were able to share and a lot of their discoveries that they knew and they gave the people who took this wisdom. A lot of them were not, uh, they did not give them credit for, for these things. They did they never, most, a lot, a lot of our ancestors did not receive credit for a lot of the things that they were able to share and present day America and present day Brazil and present day Cuba is enjoying just like that. Their experience is typically seen in the, oh, they were not allowed to read and write and if they caught them reading they would have been flogged so the general perception of most especially those who don't have any clue of what they were like from an african from a, a nigerian point of view the way that they are seen is oh they were just uh, uh, probably just idiots who didn't do anything except suffer there's a lot more to their stories there's a lot of beauty that they have that is generally just skipped over especially if you are learning in america they're, they're, they're not going to tell you that this was what they did or this was what they said it was typically oh your ancestors yeah they were slaves and they you know it's always <laughs> so it comes from even like a mockery type of type of mindset you know so in many cases like uh oh i'm i pity you or oh, well, poor your ancestors type thing instead of oh this is what they knew this is what they possessed this is what they thought this is what they shared and these were the people that stole their ideas and innovations a present day nigerian enslaved person would have said oh this tree this is what it does and this is how it can be used to treat this wound from this horse and this is what it would do after three days and perhaps now that same thing is sold in capsules and tablets and uh is given as in you know in injections as a part of a formula that is passed through the body stream as an injection but obviously america would not tell you that it was uh ojo or i know that existed in 1804 that came up with it obviously they would say it's uh this person this owner in court that came up with it so that's another thing but you know that cannot be discussed within a within a few minutes it's something that we would never get tired of exploring so i'm just going to leave that aspect for now but with the hanging people by the tree and how upsetting that would have been for the tree aspect this is another part of it especially you think of a tree that knows that uh, the person's placenta is buried underneath 
another tree, you know, the the way that trees relate to one another is definitely not the way humans relate to one another. So imagine how extra, extra upsetting it would be for them. It's like, let's say you, you're two friends. Let's, let's put it that way. You're two friends and you are, I mean, really close friends. Okay. You, you text each other every day. You love each other. Even if you're far away, your best friend's child has just been forcefully taken from their mother over to where you stay. And for some reason, somebody has come with your best friend's child into your home and has just shot them dead in your presence, in your home. You know, imagine how upsetting that would be. This is just like a scenario. This is just me trying to, to some degree, help you understand the traumatic aspect of it. If you've not seen that video, link it somewhere. You'll find it somewhere. So that's another thing. There are just different, <laughs> different facets to this that as upsetting as it can be when you talk about them, they are what talking about. That is why Afrofuturism needs to be embraced through Afrofuturism in the media and in science and in art, we're able to retell our own stories from an African and originally more empowered point of view, from a more empowered, more real <laughs> standpoint. People just say slaves, sla they talk about them in the collective as if they were just things i mean th this were individuals individual characters though there were people that were a bit more introverted than others and some more outspoken than others and there were people that were more funny than others and there were some that were generally more reserved than others and some that were more skilled than others and some that were more maternal than others. I mean, these are different peoples with different characters. So that general oversimplified view of the enslaved person who could not read and write, definitely. I mean, this were artists. Have you seen, <laughs> have you seen the sculptures that some of them made? I mean, they created beautiful and beautiful works of art. There's definitely a lot more to their stories is what I'm saying in a nutshell. For the Abiku, um, the way that they also treat the Ibi is very important. I know that I've not really explored the Abiku side of things, but I really should. Children who I don't, I think there's typically, like, if you read more into it, perhaps the child, the, that soul had a karmic thing with a particular person. Let's say the person was a man in their past life and they're a woman now, or maybe they were even a woman in their past life and they're a man now. Let's say, especially if, especially if they did something like terrible to that soul. Because we all have Egbe, right? It is believed that these children, these souls, would want to be bathed by that person, by that mother. This is just one school of thought. They want to be bathed by that person continuously. So the woman will get pregnant and let's say in two years, three years, the child is dead. And she would have to try to get pregnant again and sooner or later something happens and the child dies. So it typically happens like twice before it is concluded that oh yes this is in fact an abiku child. And how would they know that it's the same soul? Because you have to realize that our ancestors weren't stupid. How would they know that it's the same person coming back? They would, maybe after the child is dead, they will put incisions on the, on the arm or typically, very typically 
on the face maybe on the cheek or on the on the chin or something and when it, the new child is born by that same mother they would either find like it, 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 may, it may be like a dark spot or a bat mark or something like before our ancestors could, could conclude that there is such a thing as abiku people souls that are re rebirthed by the same it, there's typically like a karmic thing to it although not necessarily some see it as a kind of payback for whatever that woman did in a past life whether they were a woman in the past life or a man some see it as like just a random thing that could happen to anybody you could have been a saint uh not necessarily a saint but you could have been a really good person and still encounter souls like that children like that if you will i'll talk more about this when i talk about abiku but for the abiku they try not to like I've never, it's not really normal for children to ask, oh, where's my placenta? <laughs> it's not a normal question for even a five-year-old to ask. I would be pretty freaked out if I had a five-year-old and they came to me to say, uh, where's my placenta? I would be really <laughs> freaked out because it's not a typical question. They probably don't even know what the placenta is. So, but with the abiku, they would sometimes ask, like, where's my placenta? Iboleri, ibimimo. So they would ask, where did you put my placenta? So it's very likely that they don't let children like that know where they buried it. They believe that if they know where it is and they, are, and they step on it, whether it's underneath or they dig it out, they would be able to connect to that ibi aspect of themselves again this is just evil it's like a play on words maybe not necessarily a play on words but there's always a connection with certain things always depending on whatever happened then we don't have like a really detailed um documentary well i suppose we would have if our, a lot of our artworks weren't stolen you know um yeah so those children would ask where's my eb or whatever and once they know where it is they would be able to die again so with in in certain parts of yoruba land not all they believe that you children who are identified as abiku should never know where their eb is they should just mm -mm, don't tell them don't give them a clue or else when they, if they go there and they dig it out or they try to stand on the part of the earth that it is and just connect and say i'm ready to die again and join my egg bear again just so that i can die and be reborn it's havoc so you don't let them know so i suppose in general it's not even like a lot of people i know it was my father's side of the family that buried it i don't I don't know if they took it to Ibadjo. I don't know if it's somewhere in Ibadjo. I'm not particularly sure of where it is, but um, I know that it would be somewhere around the family home, whether in Ibadjo or Ibadjo. So they that they are, they typically take care of it, and it's 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 typically not one's concern under normal circumstances. Mm, except in the case of the abiku they found the trend trend in which there's always like an anticipation to know where it is like where did you put my eb and all that you know I, <laughs> i'm not when i get there and i'm ready to talk about it in detail and maybe do some research do more research because i <laughs> i like to go off what i know just so that i don't get influenced by what is generally believed to be the truth so for for the abiku i would actually do a google search to see if i can find something um there's also this like really disgusting trend that i came across at some point in which mothers would eat their baby's uh placenta i don't like 
<laughs> when when you talk of disgust, I think if anything disgusts me, <laughs> it would be that. I think it's very, very, very disgusting to even think about it. They are rational for doing so. I heard, I read, tends to be that uh, it contains nutrients and I, I really can't fathom it. Um, it can it can do severe damage to the baby. There's a reason why it's called EB, I think. That could also be another thing. It's not to be digested. It could really harm the baby. It's supposed to be separated from the baby. When you eat it and you breastfeed the child and the child takes their own placenta through breast milk, it could be the placenta could be infected. I mean, obviously, it's out of your body. All kinds of things are now on it. You could even kill the child. So I don't, I'm not particularly. <laughs> Uh, excited or happy about that trend that eat your baby's placenta trend I don't know <laughs> it's really disgusting to me um, so I believe to some degree I've talked about EB in detail EB could be what I mentioned in the previous video EB is also another name for the afterbirth the placenta Ibiomo if you want to be more specific if you want to be more clear that what you're referring to is the placenta you can say ibiomo an example statement that contains ib is wari ibi ojo si idi igiroko wari ibi ojo si idi igiroko wan is they ri is buried it could be bury buried bury or buried works depending on the um, because i'm translating to english <laughs> I'm, i have to say buried but in and of itself it's bury eb is placenta or afterbirth ojo is a name it's the name of a male child that was born with his okunibi tied around his arm his umbilical cord tied around his neck so there are children that wrap themselves or perhaps the umbilical cord wraps itself around the baby's neck when the baby is born they're children like that both male and female and as I suppose there are a couple of things that cause that to happen but I'll, I'll get there when i talk about names i apologize i haven't done that i should have but it's such a large topic that i have to properly plan oh this is where i want to start from and this is what i want to do first but i'll definitely get there amuton wa names that are brought from onu so predestined names due to the nature of the birth of the child or circumstances that surround the child's birth in in the Yoruba culture, giving children names before their birth is somewhat alien, to be honest. <laughs> I have to say it as it is. It's very alien because we believe that from the very point by or before the child's conception, before the child is conceived, to the very point that they are birthed. And when you say birthed, they are birthed and their placenta is birthed. That's another thing. If the placenta is not birth, <laughs> the child has not been birth. That's another interesting Yoruba thing. You don't really announce that the child has been birth until the placenta is out with them. That's why it's called Ikejiomo. Um, Orukwa Motorwa names that the child themselves bring from Orum. So the child themselves brings their own name. It would be rather weird to give the child, I mean, you can think of names, but you don't necessarily give the child a name until the process is complete. You examine the circumstances that revolved around their birth, and from that, you deduce what the name, as designed by destiny, is supposed to be. Not, oh, um, oh yeah, I'm going to call my child Beyonce because Beyonce 
is the name of a popular musician and she's rich and famous that is not necessary i mean that can be one of their other names but as far as their primary name that they will be called by everyone is concerned to just pick a name a random name it's not very the yoruba culture c is at ed is bottom or the bottom igi is tree iroko iroko is iroko <laughs> the the specific tree they buried ojo's placenta at the bottom of the iroko tree they buried ojo's placenta at the bottom of the iroko tree is mori ibi ojo si idi igi iroko that's what that means so that's just an example statement with the word for your knowing pleasure i'll make a video on eb and a prayer that includes eb soon just so you can see how it's used in a kind of context um thank you for watching thank you for your time uh, please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't and uh i'll see you in the next one bye for now Ashew. Ashew.